Digital signatures and certificates are essential in cybersecurity as they provide authentication, integrity, and a concept known as non-repudiation, which essentially is like you signing something. Therefore, if you signed it, you authorized it, and more importantly, you approved it. So in this lab, we're going to work with generating digital signatures and then learn how to verify them using certificates. And this will help us gain insights into how these cryptographic tools ensure data integrity and authenticity every day. So let's jump in. And first, we'll need a public-private key pair because this concept of digital signatures and certificates is going to require asymmetric encryption. So the same command as last lab, I'll just type that out now and generate a private key. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and generate our public key same commands as the previous lab. Okay, good. So now we'll keep the private key secret. We'll use that to sign messages. And then we can offer up our public key to be shared with others to verify the integrity of those signed messages. And that will become our digital signature. And so as always with these concepts, we need some data. So let's go ahead and echo out a statement into a file. And let's go with something maybe like digitally signed message signed by your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and we'll put that inside of a message.txt. I think that's a good message. And then next we're going to sign this file. And this is done with the OpenSSL library again. And this time we'll be giving it the option of DGST to perform a digital signature. And we'll sign it with a SHA-256 hash. That's a strong hashing algorithm. And then we're gonna sign it with our private key. And then what we need is an out file to verify the signature. And that's what we'll call signature.bin. And this creates a binary signature file hence the signature.bin, and that accompanies our message.txt. This way, whenever we want to verify that the message.txt hasn't been tampered with, we can verify the signature with a public key. So let's see how that works with another OpenSSL command. Now this command will look pretty similar, except we'll be using attack verify flag, and then we'll reference the public key and the signature file against the message, and we see verified okay, perfect that proves that it was signed with that private key. And more importantly, it was signed with that private key to verify that it was signed by your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. So if we were to go and try to tamper this file now in any way, this check would fail. And let's watch that in action. Let's vim inside of it and throw in a bunch of additional text and mess with the file. Okay. Now it's been tampered with, literally, and let's run that command again, and failed. Verification failure. Awesome. So that's how these digital signatures work. When you visit a website, the website offers up its digital certificate, and it states that it is a certain owner, and it's been signed with a certain private key. And we can't see the private key, but we do have the public key on the certificate. So what we'll do is we'll decrypt the data on that certificate with the public key, and as a result, we can verify that it was signed by its matching private key pair. Like I said in the beginning of this lab, that you can consider it to be like your physical signature that you would sign on a document, except take that document, encrypt it with your private key, and then put it out there with your public key and say, hey, use the public key, you can verify that it's me because I own that private key. And additionally, you can also verify that this is how I sign the data and it should never change because you can decrypt it with my public key against that signature file. And if it ever changes, you can run a verification check and it'll tell you that it's been tampered with. Now there's a lot of math behind all this to make sure that that works, but at a high level, that's pretty amazing that it works like that. So let's see how a website certificate would look like, and we can generate one ourselves. We'll use the same OpenSSL library, and we're going to make a certificate.pem file. However, we're also going to use the X509 format which is a widely used and supported format for these types of certificates. And the reason being is that it also includes some general human readable level type of information. As you can see, I need to specify the country name. I have to specify the number of days that it's valid. And I'm just going to put in a bunch of general info, some of it associated to level effect and complete this request. Okay, cool. And because it's a PEM file, if we cat it out right now, you'll see that same type of structure with two headers and then some base64 encoded text in between. Now, thankfully, there is a handy reader built for certificate interpretation. So we can go ahead and use that with the OpenSSL library again, and we can put the certificate through it and it will generate a nice human readable level of information. 
and this is the same type of certificate that browsers will present themselves with. So we can see over here that we have a serial number to sort of tag ourselves. We can see the signature algorithm as well too, the validity, the dates of start and finish. So when it's actually valid, we see our public key that's attached to this file as well too. We can see that it's formatted for X509 with certain versions. And we can also see in the bottom that we have a signature algorithm and that's our SHA-256 hash with the RSA encryption. So that verifies integrity. And we also have authenticity because we've signed it with a private key file. Now let's see how that compares with Certificate Online. Let's open up Firefox and we can head over to google.com and let's click on the little lock button that appears just next to the URL itself. And from inside here, we can access the certificate by selecting Connection Secure, going to More Information, and we can observe that the google.com certificate is verified by Google Trust Services, LLC. And in this case, this is the certificate authority or the CA. And this is something that our certificate doesn't have. If we wanted to get a certificate authority to sign ours, we would have to bundle up that certificate that we just made and send it to an authority like Google Trust Services or some other provider. And then what they'll do is they'll include a level of human trust. And that means business ownership information, personal details, personally identifiable information or PII. And then they're going to sign our certificate with their private key with our certificate that has our public key. So we have this very strong chain of trust that's been established. And when you go to a website, your browser does a huge verification check on this. And we can assume that the certificate authority providers are generally a high level of trust. And all of this again is possible because of asymmetric encryption. Cool. Let's take a look at the certificate itself. And we can see it over here, right? This is all of the same type of information we saw on the command line. There's the public key available for us, so we can perform that little session key exchange, which is the symmetric base encryption key. And we can see more information about who owns this and identity. So let's do that on the command line of how this actually works. And this is going to look a little complex, but for all intents and purposes, just the easiest way to understand this is I'm going to perform an SSL TLS connection to google.com on the command line. I'm going to ask for all the certificates. I'm going to run a little dev null command to clean up whatever errors or input spacing we might run into. And then I'm going to run another open SSL command. I'm going to pipe it over there and then download the full website certificate.pem file that we saw. So you can see this verification happen. You can see some requests happen to the root certificate authority and then we finally get the certificate. And so that's the same thing that we saw happen in the PCAP and the networking module, walking through the TLS connection after a handshake. And now we can use the OpenSSL X509 command once again to read that certificate we just downloaded, and we're gonna see everything that we saw inside of the browser previously. Awesome, there it is. Very cool. So yes, this lab is probably one of the more complex ones because there's a lot of cryptographic principles and concepts to sort of juggle inside of your head as it's all happening. But I hope that demonstrated just how all of this stuff actually works under the hood. And the easiest way I think you can maybe think about it is that it's just a very long sequence of public private key verification checks. And that happens multiple times. And that's really it.